How's it going, everyone? Marilyn here! And last time, I did a little bit of exploring in the Friend Safari, which is pretty cool. Pretty darn cool, really. A fun place to go. Uh, definitely check that out if you haven't already. But anyway, there's one feature I've been meaning to show for a long time now, and that is Super Training. So, this is one of the new features, along with Pokemon Ami here, that was kind of promoted for Pokemon X and Y. Now, in a nutshell, Super Training is a way to help maximize your Pokemon stats. Um, so, you know, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to get something here. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. So, if you have heard of the term called EV Training, well, that doesn't mean training EVs, don't worry. It means training your effort values or something. So really quick, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a very special shiny Meryl here. But this Meryl is one I really wanted to breed in order to get a very good, nice shiny Meryl. So in the past, if I wanted to uh, make sure its stats were all proper, I would do this process called EV training. And let me just tell you, that's still more effective than super training. Super training is good for the casual players who just don't quite understand EV training or, you know, who just want to kind of do it and maybe have some fun with it. So let's go ahead and walk through this whole super training thing. What do you say? You're probably going to want to take a Pokemon that's just freshly trained, but even if you have something well trained, or not well, well trained, but you know, something way leveled up like I have, you can still find a way to, to make it work. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this thing together. What do you say? This is a super training machine, which we also call ST. ST lets you train your Pokemon anytime, no matter where you are. You train with these things called balloon bots, and yeah. And then there's this core training thing, which is some stuff you can do on the side, and you can train while you're exploring. So that's kind of neat. Make any sense to you? Yeah, probably not, but that's fine. So, when you first get this going, it'll say, welcome to ST, and whole bunch of stuff. It kind of shows you. It walks you through everything. So that's nice. So let's just go through it. What do you say? Okay, so we're going to do some special training for my Pokemon. Alright, now I can tell you right now my Meowstic is probably all set, but maybe not. Um, there is a point where your Pokemon stats are maxed out as far as super training goes, but that's fine. But in this case, if assuming they aren't, practicing against Scatterbug here will raise my defense um, well they call it base stats but most real people call them effort values or EVs um, so really you can move around using the control stick you can move up down left right all that fun stuff you can also zoom in closer and move further back by using the um, the d-pad actually now, these balloon bots, they will kind of shoot at you. And you'll probably be wondering, well, what on earth am I supposed to do? So, there, on the bottom screen, there's a little thing that you can just kind of tap. I don't know if you can see it too well, but my Meowstic here is throwing all of these soccer ball things based on where I'm tapping on the bottom screen. So, you kind of have to coordinate. It doesn't exactly show where you're going to hit, so you might have to launch several of those different... Um, whatever they are, like soccer ball things, um, in order to hit the target. Okay, so Meowstic's base stats can't go any higher than they already are. It's a fully trained Pokemon. That's actually a good thing in this instance. It's nice to start with a fully trained Pokemon, just so, um, you can go through everything. Now, after you've completed a training regimen, you'll end up getting a training bag, or maybe some other kind of item. In this case, I got a strength bag. Alright, so I do indeed have a fully trained Pokemon. That means its EVs are totally set. I can't change them. I can't gain any more. There are ways that I can reset it, though. Okay, but let's follow this tutorial. So, right down here, you can pick a training bag from the list on the left and tap on it. So, remember that strength bag we just got? Well, yeah. So, successful shots will award more points in the Pokemon's next super training regimen. Well, that's nice. Let's go ahead and use that. Now... Before this activates, you actually have to tap this multiple times. Um, as the thing said, it will, it'll like automatically hit it every minute or so. But really, just kind of, kind of keep tapping it with your stylus or something, 
And then eventually, <laughs> it does some really impressive looking thing, and then it activates whatever effect of that bag you're using. So in this case, Meowstic Shots will get it more points the next time it does super training. That's cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and try that out. So we're going to go to a super training thing. And we're going to try this thing here. Again, this is still just a tutorial. That's why I'm not using my new shiny Meryl there. Which I will want to EV train. Or super train properly. But yeah, so this time I'm not going to mess around quite as much. So you may also notice there's this kind of circle thing in the middle of the, um, well, bottom middle there. And there's also a score. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Let's see. Um, energy shots. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what I was about to start talking about. You see that round meter down low in the middle of your Nintendo 3DS system's upper screen? Yep, that's how much energy your Pokemon has. Uh, when you're full of that energy, the shots you let loose transform into energy shots. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. So in this case, it's all full, so I just launched a really cool, like, I don't know, like an orange ball, you know? Now I'm intentionally missing. I just kind of want to... I mean, you know, I would take that thing out in two hits if I destroyed it, and I wouldn't be able to explain things. But, yeah, that's kind of how the energy shots work. If you just keep tapping the thing, you'll fire these really weak kind of soccer balls and stuff. And that's fine, but it probably isn't the best way to do things. So, yeah. Anyway... After you've done those, um, those first batch, the training batch there, you unlock the first level of super training courses, which is pretty neat. Additionally, since I have a fully trained Pokemon, I can go right to the secret super training, um, which is really cool. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all of these necessarily, but let's just try this attack one. In fact, I should really try this with my, um, Meryl, because attack is definitely something I would want for a huge power Meryl. All right, but let's just try it for now with my epic meow stick here. Okay, so when you're starting up these courses, it will give you a little bit of advice here. Um, each balloon bot that you have to fight has sort of a different rhythm to it. When a shot from a balloon bot hits you, you'll lose some of the points you earned. If you reach the time limit without enough points, it'll be game over for your regiment. All right, so yeah, we just kind of have to dodge things. Now, this is essentially super easy. I can just keep kind of... You know, tap on the bottom screen. And you want to clear it usually within, I think, a minute in most instances. When you do that, it's considered to have unlocked it or to master it or something like that. It's, um... Oh, where is it? Let's see. Best time. Oh, I don't think it says it here, but there is, like, a target time you want to shoot for. There it is, like, up top. It says target time remaining. So that's how much time you want to have left by the time you beat it. Um, in this case, I beat this course in uh, two, well, with two minutes and 51 seconds remaining. So yeah, totally aced that. Um, so that's cool. Now, once I've unlocked all of these, or once I've beaten all of these, it actually unlocks a second set of them, which is great. And then after I've done that for the next set, it's like another level, you could say. Well, that's pretty good. Now, really quick, let's say I don't want to train Meowstic anymore. In fact, let's say I want just to kind of check something else out. Let's check Aerodactyl here. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So Aerodactyl's all fully trained. That's good. And you can even see I have an EV trained this thing or super trained it or anything. But the old way of EV training still holds true. Where when you knock out Pokemon, based on the Pokemon species you gain a certain amount of these these effort values, as they were called. They're called base stats now, but most people will still refer to them as EVs, or effort values. But that's what this little light green bar is. The, the darker green bar is kind of like their natural stats. And then the, the light green bar on that kind of chart down on the bottom screen, that just kind of shows, okay, um, you know, that's how much the the EVs or the super training or the base stats or whatever have helped. Um, so, you know, you can kind of see where they're all at. But then there's this Meryl here. And it hasn't really done much of anything. So, let's go ahead and start with it. Also, you may notice on the very right side of this bottom screen here, you may notice that there's this kind of gauge thing. And it's empty for Meryl, but it's totally filled up for everything else. 
When that bar reaches full, it means it has indeed maxed out all of its quote-unquote base stats, or effort values as we all call them. Um, so that's kind of a good indicator of your progress too. When that reaches full, you're all maxed out and you can't gain anymore. If you were to represent them with numbers, any individual stat can go up to 252 now. Um, and you can only have 510 between all six of your stats. So you really have to kind of pick and choose. You can't max out everything, which is rather unfortunate, but at the same time, it gives you a great element of strategy. Now, I do have, let's see, there's an attack bag S here and a defense bag S. So let me just go ahead and use this and I'll just kind of show you. I want to max out attack and speed. I think that'd be, actually, I don't even know if I need speed. Attack and hit points might be even better. So let's just go ahead and do this. And thankfully, you know what? Even if I don't get it right, there are these things called reset bags that you can get that will totally reset any of the effort values that you've gained. Which is so nice. If you make a mistake, you can do that and just get everything back to back to the start. Oops. Um, let's see. So when you see cleared here, that means cleared in general. If you have that little ribbon there, like you saw on the um, well, when I was doing this with Meowstic, that means that that Pokemon specifically has cleared it. At least I'm pretty sure. We're gonna go to attack and let's just try have Meryl do this. Remember how strong my Meowstic was? Well, this is a level one Meryl, and it doesn't have the um, the training, just in general, that um, that the one would have. So, oh, now Meryl, see, it has those very large kind of orange ones, and this is going to take a bit, huh? See, if I were to just lob the ones, like the small kind, oops. So you got to watch for those patterns. Okay, now there is another thing I may be able to do. I don't know if I have to unlock it or not. Okay, so they haven't yet explained this in the tutorial. But if you hold in on the stylus for like a few seconds and then release it like I've just done there, that unleashes what's called a power shot. And it tends to do, I don't know, about triple the value or thereabouts and that's a good way for slower shots to hit even more so this Meryl is doing rather poor compared to that Meowstic in case you couldn't tell that's why it's oftentimes nicer just to have a more um, properly EV train slash super train slash whatever you want to call it it's better to have a Pokemon like that go ahead and start the training to get the bags and stuff and then just you know kind of help help later on um, and there are various varieties, too. Like this Meryl here, for instance, it has those orange kind of soccer ball things. And I don't know exactly what they are. I think they're kind of slower, but larger, kind of hit more. Um, whereas the one I had, Meowstic, it was more of like a rapid fire kind of thing. So let's see. Now, I know this wasn't very good, but again, that's because... <laughs> you know, I'm just using a level 1 Meryl here. If I were to use something else, I'd be in better shape. Now, I have an attack bag L, and I can actually go ahead and use that if I wanted. In fact, let's go ahead and do that, because that is certainly something we would like to use. The downside is it's going to take quite a bit of work. Yeah, you really have to tap that thing like crazy. Thankfully, you can move around while you're doing this. So let's say you're into hatching eggs or something. You know, maybe you can do both at the same time. Um, so yeah, hey, out of my way, come on. And then once I finish with this bag, I'll have plus 12, I think it is. Oh, here we go. And I could just leave it on the bottom just so it'll work passively in the background. But yes, okay, so now Maryland has 12 more attacks. So, let's see, I think about 15 total or so. No, 14, 16, 17, because I think there was one extra. All right, now I'm just going to do the attack stage one more time with Meryl, just to kind of show you how much it's improved. Because as your, your quote-unquote base stats or EVs or whatever you want to call them, as they improve, you'll do more damage, or you'll be able to move faster, or you'll receive less damage. And this is based off of the stat that you're training. So, for instance, um, oh, see, now I'm, now I'm hitting pretty good. Whoops, there we go. 
See, now I hit for 48. Thanks to just a little bit of that attack. But I still may move rather slow. Oops. See, when it goes in that circle like that, you really want to just kind of stay back and just wait. There we go. That's also important. If you have um, stuff that's moving slower, don't launch your really fast attack at it because otherwise it's going to hit it before the slower one hits it. And that doesn't do you any good. Okay, so we went ahead and we sent that Axew balloon all away. And we gained some more of that attack. But not quite enough to get to where I need to be for clearing that. So that's fine. But anyway, um, that's just kind of an idea of how it works. As you train more, you will get better EVs, better stats and stuff, and you'll just be able to do more. Now, I'm going to go ahead and check out... Let's try this Greninja out, okay? So, you don't have to clear all of the super training stuff with a single Pokemon. I think if you do, it gives you some kind of bonus, but... You know, you don't have to. So in this instance, I'm just going to go through with a Pokemon that's already all super trained and everything. And pretty much just crush everything. This is something you can actually do from the moment you get your starter Pokemon if you want. It's just more difficult to do because you don't really have the, um, the stats on your side. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, Greninja just goes so fast. I think it has one of those like super fast ones. It's kind of small, but packs a punch. Okay, but even though I didn't get any, any effort values for this, I do receive those training bags. So that's why it's kind of nice to have a more experienced Pokemon go through if you want to do super training. Again, remember how I was saying earlier where when you knock Pokemon out, you get those effort values? You can do that same thing with this. Um, or... You can super train, essentially, the same way, except without doing this minigame. And it does go faster. I'm not going to lie. This is not <laughs> two hits. Good game. This is not the most efficient way to train. It's just kind of fun. It's a nice alternative. And later on, when you're doing some of the secret super training stuff, you can get some better items for it, too. And that's nice. Now, as you see, I get, like, a special attack bag for clearing that. I think when you're clearing specific stages like that, you get the kind that you're training. So that's always kind of nice. Alright, now I don't think I'm going to bore you through each and every stage. Particularly these early ones. I'm just going to do like one more here. Oh, this is kind of annoying because see, it kind of moves around. And if you're really new to it, it can take you a while to get an idea of how fast you're shooting those soccer balls. And where they're going to end up. Because that tentacool, that's actually kind of a pain. Because, you know, it's flailing. It's it's little whatever you call it. Um, all around. And you might not know where your soccer ball is going to land. So, that takes practice. It really does. I've practiced on another version of mine. And it works pretty well. Okay, so, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear some more of these. Um, I don't really feel like... I'm going to be showing you all that much, so I'll just kind of show you what I've got here, and I'll get back to you once I'm a little further on. How's that sound? Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and cleared all of the level 1 super training um, stages, I'll be able to access the level 2 super training stages. Now, mind you, I can't actually access these as any Pokemon, I'm pretty sure. Let me just see here. But it's um, definitely a lot more of a challenge here. I'll even show you. I'll try attack here. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the strategies do change a bit as you get to the higher levels. Because they're meant for more kind of mid-level Pokemon here. So I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to do this. Obviously, 1,500 is a lot to overcome. Um, use barriers to guard yourself in a pinch. Sometimes you simply cannot dodge an opponent's shots. Here's what to do then. Just press the L button, and you'll be able to throw up a barrier to protect yourself. Um, you can't use it non-stop, but you can use it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go for those power shots there. Hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay. 
So typically, if you see it just kind of... Oh, and when there's this red one there, it's just going to stay there for a bit. So just kind of go crazy to it. Oftentimes, you're better just kind of going rapid fire or at least waiting. Um, let's see. This is going to take forever. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Meryl. You can do it. There we go. Let's see. See, like, I don't know if I would have been better off just kind of shooting a whole bunch of the small ones at it. Oh, that was close. Okay, so let me show you that L trick really quick. Next time it fires at me. See, like, I can just put that up, and it breaks shortly after using it. But if you just hold it down, it should do pretty good. Oh my goodness, this is going so slow. And again, that's just because I haven't yet finished the super training for this Meryl. So, obviously, it's not all that great right now. Here, just try it. Oh, yeah, I'm invincible. Yeah, it doesn't last forever, but... See, there you go. It keeps you safe. Now, if you get hit, you end up losing some of your score. So that's why it's really important not to get hit. And it's based on your defense, so... It could be really disastrous if I were hit right now. Okay, those shots are so much easier to pull off when the foe isn't moving. See, there we go. That's a good use of it. Oh, almost there. Alright, come on. Let's do another power shot or two. Whoops. It does take a lot of practice kind of aiming, you know. And even at that, oftentimes the Pokemon will move around. So, oops. <laughs> Oh, so close. Come on. <laughs> well, nowhere near that target time, that's for sure. But, again, you know, when you're not as high of stats and stuff, that's just kind of how it goes. So, hopefully that makes a little sense to you. All right. So, let's see. But I did get plus eight attack, and that's nice. And I did get one of those attack bags. So that's cool. And now I can just go back with one of my other Pokemon and just kind of sweep everything else up. What do you say, huh? So let me just go ahead and... Oh, what kind does Pangoro have? Let's see, just kind of mix things up here. All right, well, let's try Pangoro here. All right, we're going to do this. Let's just try one of these hit point ones. See how it goes. Oh my goodness. All right, 2,500 hit points. Now they're talking about that charged shot there. And that's kind of what I've been doing for a bit. Um, I guess Relicanth here is a good example of it. Wow, this thing is pretty sweet. <laughs> Whoa, that is big. Oh my goodness, Pangora's pretty nice. It has like those black soccer balls, and I don't know what it is about them. They're just kind of normal, but they recharge pretty quick. They hit pretty hard. Can't complain there. Okay, cool. Now you can only hold up to 12 of those training bags, so that kind of stinks. To be honest, you'll end up having to throw away a lot or using a lot. Don't feel bad about throwing them away because you really don't need that many. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these level 2 ones so we can get to the level 3. And I think that'd be good. Okay, so really quick here. Notice with that Graveler how it put up some kind of weird barrier thing. Oh, I'm so missing. Um, Well, you have to hit a specific spot that kind of moves around before that barrier breaks. And that can be kind of annoying to do, but once you've got that, you're pretty much set. And thankfully with Graveler there, I mean, there's so many spots you can hit when the barrier isn't up. It's quite convenient. But you do have to be mindful of that barrier. Yeah, they get more tricks. Oh, this Aerodactyl one, such a pain. Oh my goodness, I remember getting so angry at this. <laughs> oh, my other... 
version, it's like, oh my goodness, trying to get this thing was just insane. But I also use things that hit slower, so if you have a faster shooting Pokemon, you're pretty much okay. This recommends using the charged shot, but as you can see, it can be a little tricky to aim right, because this thing likes to flap its wings, trying to keep keep up with that. Oh, it's like, oh, I just want to hit it. Now, I was doing that, I think it was the, the green kind, and it was just so painful because it took, like, forever for the balls to get there. So, it's like, oh, man, you just have to time it just right. I guess it's so much better with Pangoros here, since they're the, the black soccer balls, and they just seem to kind of shoot much faster, which is good. Okay, so also, I'm at 12 bags, so at this point, any bags that I get will automatically be discarded. So really, what you need to do is just good bag management. Any bags you know you don't really need... And, you know, even these S ones, I mean, I could use them, but it isn't really a big deal. It's like, eh, you know what? There are much better ones. Even though you want the L ones, those raise it by 12, I think. Yeah, I think it's 12, and then it's uh, for any Ls. That's actually pretty good. But again, I'm going to be getting so many bags, it doesn't matter. The Ms give plus 4, and the Ss give just a mere plus 1. So you really never need the Ss, unless you're just trying to, you know hit a certain number the m's you know they're really not all that great because it's like oh well four big deal okay now notice how aerodactyl is kind of bouncing on the bottom screen well it has a smiley face and if you tap it a few times with that smiley face a bag will just kind of pop down and that's actually super convenient see it just got a reset bag remember those reset bags i was telling you about they're actually kind of rare um, but when you see those smiley faces by tapping on the Pokemon, they'll end up finding just a whole ton of these bags. Now, I think this is a great idea to use the reset bag here. I'll get more, but that's a great way to just totally reset a Pokemon's effort values. And just kind of let it do other things. Um, you know, a lot of people, if you're just playing through the game, you don't really think too much about effort values or super training... Or all that kind of stuff. Man, I'm getting all sorts of things. Now that bag there, that's a soothing bag. That's kind of nice. It helps you raise happiness, which is good. Um, yeah, definitely good. But the reset bag is definitely one of the most useful. Simply because it allows you to reset your Pokemon's EVs. Or base stats, or whatever you want to call them, really. So you can just keep doing this and get some good stuff. Yeah, I know. And if you happen to get something called a Team Flare bag, that kind of triggers that happiness. And you get all sorts of things like that. Okay, so let's see. Are you done? Oh my goodness, you're just giving me so much stuff. Like, more stuff than I even need. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's good to show. I think I'll try that reset bag. I don't know who to try it on, but I might as well try it on this Aerodactyl. Alright, so let me just wrap this up. Come on, get something. There we go. All right, so we're going to use that reset bag on the Aerodactyl. Typically, they're good to save. You don't want to use them as soon as you get them. But this will reset all of the base stats of a Pokemon. Now, also, really nice. You can save before you use this. And you'll see how many effort values um, your Pokemon has. So, oh, darn it. <laughs> I hit the wrong thing. Okay, let me just keep at it. But it's a good way to, um... Don't give up, kid. It'll be worth it. I promise. Right. It's a good way to kind of see how many effort values your Pokemon have if you're not entirely sure. If you have a reset bag, just save beforehand and then just keep tapping that thing and eventually... Eventually you'll hit it and all of your base stats or effort values or whatever you want to call them. See? Look at all that. That was what Aerodactyl had. Now, while it's cool and all, I'd rather put all of that into attack and speed. Because that's far more fitting for a, an Aerodactyl as a general rule. As a general rule. So, let's just see how well she performs in uh, one of these things. Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. Mm, I don't really want to do that special defense with, with her. I don't really think she needs that. So, let's just stick to Meowstic here. Oops, 
Candlestick, where'd you go? And then we get to go to the, the final level of the basic super training stuff. Which is good. Alright, oh, BitBots. So, I guess while I'm here, I might as well tell you about these BitBot things. They can be kind of annoying because they will sort of block attacks and just get in your way. Uh, they're small AI-powered bots that balloon bots can summon at will. Um, they act as a shield. And when you defeat them, they'll regenerate. So, essentially, you know, you just want to kind of keep up the... Ooh, look at that rapid fire. It's so good. See those balloons there? They are just going to kind of block things unless you get rid of them. But you can get rid of them just by hitting them. Also, you may have noticed that that, that blue thing it just sent at me. It, oh, darn it. See, I got hit. <laughs> that blue one it sent kind of has like a homing. And remember that L shield, okay? That can really help if you're getting chased by one of those things. Alright, well, there we go. Oh, joy. Special Defense Bag S, huh? <laughs> anyway, we unlocked the final super training, um, just the standard super training courses. And this is where you'll do most of the super training stuff if you're looking for particular stats. Now, again, since my Meowstic here is a fully trained Pokemon, indicated by that little kind of muscle-looking thing next to the Meowstic image on the bottom screen, uh, he has access to the secret super training courses. Which I will show you. Um, but let's uh, let's just take a look at how kind of rough these are. In fact, let's go ahead and fight that Haxorus. Except we're going to do that with my freshly reset Aerodactyl here, who hopefully has enough fight in her. We're going to find out. So this will raise her attack by 12. And if I can do this within, uh, what was it, two minutes, then I get it perfect or whatever. That's a good thing. Okay, so Haxorus has some furious attacks, that's for sure. But does Aerodactyl have enough to keep up? Okay, so I don't get some kind of helpful message. Ooh, only four, that's not good. <laughs> this could take a while. Wasn't sure how weak I'd be, but... Ooh, yeah, see how that kind of goes? That's so nasty. Ooh, yeah, you gotta watch out, because if it, if it does that kind of circle one... Well, it's just bad news if you try to move. So you really want to just stick around for it. Hmm. Poor Aerodactyl is so inhibited without all those effort values. You see how it makes a difference, huh? They can find a good rhythm, too. Okay. Oh, oh, 400 down. That's not good. Okay, so if you're getting totally wrecked like I am, well, there's a few options. One, you can just keep fighting the good fight. Or if you know, you know what, this just isn't going anywhere. There's a little arrow on the bottom screen. You can just kind of, I think, tap twice, and that just gets you out of there. You'll bow out of super training. So that can be kind of effective. And I think we're just going to have to do that with Aerodactyl here. She's just not quite up to these level 3 ones. Now that her effort values have been reset. Um, yeah, so that's definitely something to be mindful of. Interestingly, I think she may still be able to go to the super ones. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wreck things with, um, with Greninja here. And then we're going to check out the super ones, so... Yeah, let's just see how this goes. Okay, you know, in thinking about it, I could go ahead and carry on with that. Or, I could just go ahead and try some of the secret training stuff. So, if, you know, you're interested in seeing any of these specifically, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to do another video on this or not. But, basically, you just kind of have to practice with it, I guess. The more um, trained your Pokémon are, the better of a shot they'll stand against any of these. And oftentimes having things that aren't properly EV trained just gives you more diversity. Um, so that's kind of nice. But anyway, let's go ahead and check these secret ones out. They end up unlocking um, more as you complete them. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all of these in this one video, but let's just go ahead and start with a few. 
And they also tend to give you items, too. You might end up picking some pretty good items up, in addition to interesting bags. So let's fight this Aurorus balloon here. Let's see what's up. It only has 1,800. And what is circuit training? Now, this is tough. Um, two or more balloon bots in a row. So kind of have to watch out because this 1,800 here, that is just for Aurorus. Now, I find when it does that kind of thing, just kind of... Like, I don't even know how to describe it. Just kind of move out of the way. If you kind of move in, I don't know, just circular, I guess that tends to work. Alright, so now I have to fight Tyrantrum. Well, thankfully, I just kind of stomped Aurorus. But if you haven't fully trained yet, that can be bad. Whoa. Just letting loose. It's got so much, so much energy to it. Oh, man. Okay, but thankfully we managed to stomp it flat. So that's good. That's really good. And it was a success. So, now you may notice three minutes and seven seconds. What? But that's because you actually gain, I think, 30 seconds after you've um, after you've beaten the first one in a circuit training like that. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so this is the Leaf Stone Cup. And you can get Leaf Stones this way. Which is just so exciting, because it's not like you can just go and buy those. <laughs> but that's okay, because there are other stones you can get. And ones that you can't just buy. So it's very convenient um, if, let's say, you need dusk stones or stuff like that. Now, the faster you end up clearing... Whoa, my goodness. Um, the faster you end up clearing these regimens the more likely you are to get the rare item. And that could be really helpful for stuff like the stones. So definitely try to just keep your pace going. You'll find a good rhythm. I, you know, it's not like something I can really just say because so much of it is you really have to practice and you really have to figure out your own Pokemon. Um, you know, some may just plain and simple work better for you. Oh, see, I got a Leaf Stone and a Special Defense Bag L. It's pretty cool. Now, I have 11 bags, so I gotta pay attention. I gotta start releasing them once I get 12. Alright, so let's see. Now I gotta fight this Charizard in the Firestone Cup. Alright, that's fine. I'm trying to remember what all these things do. And clearly, they have a lot more in the way of. Um, a lot more in the way of stuff. Ooh, see, this is nasty. You really kind of have to move a bit. And I recommend when they have those big kind of soccer balls, just try to um, just try to stay out of the way. Don't don't try too much to uh, fire stuff. Whoa, that's wild. <laughs> and then depending on the Pokemon, your charge shots may be better or worse. It's really hard to tell. Uh, it does take some time charging. Like, in this case... Oop. In this case, I think my normal shots are probably just a little bit better. But in some cases, you just hit for so much. I think I've had times where it's like... I hit for, I don't even know, close to a thousand or something. With a charge shot, so that's good. Okay, and see, I get like a soda pop for doing that. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and then, of course, there's, you know, the, the Blastoise, the Water Stone Cup. And I'll get to that, but let me just go ahead and get rid of some of these bags. That's one thing I wish, is that we could just hold on to more bags. Now, again, I'm going to be getting plenty more. So don't don't sweat the small stuff, really. The only things you'll really want to hold on to are probably, like, I don't know, two, two reset bags, maybe. These double-up bags are kind of nice. Um, won't do you any good for the secret super training stuff, but they double the base stats you get when you super train. So that's kind of nice. And soothing bags are always handy if you're trying to raise something's happiness. So, you know, and this, this hit point L1. Well, I'll hold on to it. I might use that on my Meryl. Okay, so let's go back to this. Try to get some more stuff. We're going to fight this this Blastoise in the Waterstone Cup. Yeah! See how that goes. And they do mix their strategies up, so you have to kind of be on guard. And like I've said numerous times... It, it's just so different with each and every Pokemon. Like, you'll have your own strategies based on your Pokemon stats, based on which type of um, soccer ball thing it uses. 
But most importantly, just try to be very mindful of the type of soccer ball attacks that the Pokemon are using. Like any that are in that diamond shape or circle shape that kind of are coming at you but spreading apart, just stay still. Try not to freak out at those. But when they fire and launch just a whole ton of different kinds at you, that can be very intimidating. Um, and then there's the slow kinds, like big slow kinds that just sneak up on you. All right, so what is this? Following those fleeing goals. I'm trying to remember what kind of item you get for this. I know you get interesting items in all of these um, super training, or the secret super training courses, or regimens. I just don't remember what they all are right now. But most are kind of worthwhile, particularly when you get later on. All right, so this Dunfisk, huh? Oh, see, look at that. This is so nasty when you get this. Oh, man. And when, when you're stuck like that, just try to keep that barrier up. And if you just can't... Oh, my goodness. See, I think my Pangoro is just hideously slow. You can also be rather safe from that if you can get to the top left corner or the top right corner. I'll try that next time. I just wasn't quite prepared for it. If your Pokemon can move faster, then great. You can get out of the way from those attacks a lot easier. In the Stunfisk's case, it looks like once you just survive that, it just keeps that red barrier thing up, or that red whatever it is, the red target up for so long. So, you know, if you can't dodge it all, whatever. All right, great. Ooh, some Stardust and some Hit Point Bag L. Nice, nice. Certainly good. All right, now I have to fight this thing. Looks like it has balloon bots. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's go for it. That's one tricky second half, huh? Yep. All right, let's see what you're all about. Okay, Furious Counter. Um, it gets faster as you get more points, and its shots get more powerful, too. So, yeah. Definitely watch out for that. Oh, whoops. Just kind of aiming all over the place. See, some kind of like a circular motion right there is good. Just try to avoid it. Don't get caught up in it. You can fire if you're able to, but don't don't get too wrapped up in it. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to get distracted and then you're going to get hit. And that's just not what you want. Uh-oh, it looks like it's changed its sort of its stance. Oh, man. See, that's moving slow, but you can get out of the way from it pretty easily. All right, well, cool. Took that thing out. I'm trying to remember if that's maybe what gives you the Dusk Stone. I don't know something does. Stardust, double up bag. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. All right, what do we got here? Oh, I think this is maybe what gets you, like, the, the Dawn Stone. Or no, not Dawn. I'm sorry, the Shiny Stone. Typically, it's whatever item evolves the thing you're fighting. I mean, in the case of, like, the Thunder... Or the... Stunfisk and the Charizard and all that. You know, they just give you the elemental stones. But in this case, I think I get the other thing. Um, let's see. So this is basically the exact opposite of what I just fought. It gets so much more strong early on in the fight. Hmm. There we go. Alright. And it's, like, fast and hard to deal with. Oh, these are just the worst. See, again, if you can just kind of dodge it like that, you should be in okay shape. But obviously, in this kind of situation, you have to be a little bit more aggressive early on. Oh, man. See? Bottom corner. Bottom or top corner. Either of those can kind of work. Oh, this Rosalie is a pain. Okay, now it's weakened, so it should be much easier to handle. That was close. All right. Just keep at it. There we go. Fantastic. All right. Cool. And ta-da! I get a shiny stone. That's pretty nice. They're somewhat rare, actually. But that's how you can get more of them. And the better your time is... 
the more likely you are to get that stone. So you want to get as close, well, not as close to the target time. You just want to just totally blow that target time away. Like this one's target time is a minute 30. If I could do it in two minutes and 30 seconds, I'd be like really good. I don't think I'd be able to, but maybe. This thing has a lot of score I need to get through. A lot of hit points. Whoa. See, that is just brutal. Oh my goodness. But you can't avoid it. You just have to really kind of prepare for it. Oh man, this one, when, when you deal with this... Oh, what? Darn. <laughs> Typically I try to go up to the corner, but it did not seem to work there. Um, going up top is probably your best bet. Either up top or on the bottom. And then trying to get in between those those points. Like in this case, see if I can just kind of sneak in between there. Then I'm pretty good. Alright, so let's just keep at this. Oh, see, here we go again. You can also just use your L button, and that kind of gets you through, but let's face it, who wants to do that, huh? It's those blue ones that come at you. Horizontal, and then vertical, and then horizontal, and then vertical. Ugh, it's so nasty. Really, if you can just use your L button for that, you're probably best off there. Okay, oh, nice! A Dawnstone and an Attack Bag L. That's great. Very great. Okay, I don't even remember what item this gives you. But we have to fight against Scatterbug. This thing's coming back with a vengeance. Yep. Scatterbug lugs back. Oh, really now? We'll see about that. Okay, so. Also, you may notice that I wait just a little bit before I start firing um, my soccer balls here. That's simply because I want to make sure that little charge meter in the bottom has at least enough charge that I can keep kind of going. Otherwise, I'm going to be firing these really wimpy shots. And who wants that? It really depends. Oh, see, there's that barrier I was telling you about. So you have to hit that yellow target in order to break the barrier down. Ooh, snap. All right, let's just move out of the way. There we go. All right, what do you got next, huh? Oh, predictable. Vivian, huh? What kind of Vivian is that? It's a balloon. Okay. Now, you may notice I'm also just firing... Whoa! A whole ton of these. I mean, I'm not like... What the heck? Oh, actually, it wasn't quite as... Huh, that just looks so weird. Um, I just try to fire as many as I can, but not too fast. Just keep up a good rhythm that you can seem to keep up with. I mean, if you get a lot of those really weak damage shots, you should probably hold off just a little bit. And just kind of keep an eye on how much score you're getting. Because that gives you an indicator. Are you firing too fast? Are you not firing fast enough? Should you be using charge shots or whatever? You'll find a rhythm that works for you. But it's really important that you are able to adapt to that rhythm. Like, just because I could tell you something, um, or at least what I'm doing, it doesn't mean it will work if you're using a different type of Pokemon. All right, so I got a Swift Wing and a Speed Bag L. I guess that's okay. All right, so we just have three more of these super training things. This is a barrage of Bitbots. Well, let's see what this is all about, huh? Sounds exciting. Those bit bots can be really annoying, though. That is a weird-looking balloon. Not even gonna lie, that thing looks weird. All right, 7,200. Oh my goodness. All right, so. Oh, uh, let's see if we can get those bit bots out of the way. Now, right now, they don't seem to be blocking anything. But if I'm trying to get too close, then maybe they will. Oh, darn it. Just oh, see, they're firing at me. So, at this point, you can either just kind of ignore them or just kind of hit them anyway. I think I'm actually doing worse trying to hit them. Whoa, all right, just be on guard because they will fire at you. But you also might not need to tend to them. Oops, I didn't even see that one up there. All right, let's see. Now, sometimes another effective strategy is just trying to hit the white targets 
as quickly as possible so the um, the balloon will move on to like its red target thing. And then you can just kind of fire a whole ton at it. So that's kind of nice. Sometimes you'll do that in earlier steps where you don't have as many of your effort values and where it's a little more challenging because that way you can just go crazy when it has that red one up. Okay, well that wasn't fantastic, but I did get a defense bag L and a health wing out of it, so it's not that bad. Alright, this is a kind of tricky one. Drag down high dragon. Now this is tough. One wrong step will set you back to zero. So, gotta be careful for that. If it hits, it will hit hard. Yeah. So, gotta be careful. I might get hit on purpose. I want to kind of see. Just because it's kind of neat to see. Um... <laughs> But we'll see. Okay, let's um, one hit game over. Wow. Yeah, so you really have to be good at dodging and all that jazz. Otherwise, you could run into some problems. So obviously try to take Dino out of here as quickly as possible. Then let's move on to, can you guess it? That's right, it's Vilas. On the bright side, you do get 30 extra seconds each time you clear one of these, because it's one of those circuit training things. So you have to fight multiple in a row. Once you kind of have an idea of where their targets are going to show up, it gets a little easier to hit them. I mean, you know, I, he, that thing didn't even use an attack on me. But it was pretty predictable, and it didn't use a lot of stuff, so that's good. Now, High Dragon, that's going to be tough, because 4,800, and if I get hit once... My score goes back down to zero. So, yeah. But don't let that nervousness get to you either. It doesn't attack too often, as you can see. Uh oh. Yeah, but when it does... Oh, I'm so tempted. I kind of want to see it. <laughs> oh. At least its pattern isn't, like, too bad. And it can be rough, but you just really have to watch to see if it's using one of those barrages or if it's using one of those circle things. And I think it might be able to do one of the big kind of pillar things at you, so you got to watch out for that. Ooh, some lemonade. Yum. Okay, so this is it. This is, I think, the final one. Yep, Battle for the Best, version X. So this is exclusive to Pokemon X, Okay. This will be different if you're playing Pokemon Y, but I'm pretty sure it's more or less the same. Your prizes for beating this are, I think, any of the prizes you can get in uh, the other ones. So you might get some stones and stuff. You might get some other neat things. Um, it's kind of a fun pastime. You'll get good bags and things, I think, from it. So, But there's a lot you got to really fight with. Whoa. Oh my goodness, that Larvitar. <laughs> Alright, so after you've cleared Larvitar, you're up to Pupitar. And again, this is X. I think it might be Aeron and then... Agron? No, Aeron and Lyron and then... Agron. And then something else, of course. <laughs> I wonder if you can guess what! What do you think it is, huh? See, in this case, you're just best thing still. At least for me. So often they try to fake you out by using that diamond or that circle kind of attack. And that just is not the way to go. Because if you move, you're going to get hit. But then again, there are some that... Oh, see this one? I just try to move right up in here. Right up into that corner. And that keeps me safe. And then just move back so you're able to move back there eventually. Move back while firing if you can. There we go. Okay, so we got that out of the way. And, yep, if you guess Mega Tyranitar, or I guess if you're playing Y, I think it's Agron. Not entirely sure. You're right. Now, this has some bit bots. They'll be hitting and doing all sorts of nasty stuff. This thing hits hard. I don't know if it will reset you if it hits you, but. Ooh. Might not want to find out. See, I just find sometimes dealing with those bit bots is just more hassle than it's worth. It's like, eh, you know what? I could, or I could just kind of just keep firing. <laughs> that just kind of does the trick. 
Alright, so we've slain the Mega Tyranitar Balloon. Woohoo! And, yeah, I mean, that pretty much... Actually, that was a pretty good time. <laughs> that was okay. I only get a Moo Moo Milk for it, though. How disappointing, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's it. Um, anyway... That is kind of how you can do some of the uh, super training. And that's one really... Not effective or efficient, but it's a simple-ish and kind of fun way to EV train. Again, if you really want to know the best way, and I'll probably show you a revised version of this too, um, you're really best going into the battle maze on here and picking up a set of these power items here. In fact, if you can get multiple, you can train up multiple Pokemon at a time, which is really nice. These add, I think, like four to the respective stat, and that's before the Pokerust. So every Pokemon you knock out in the wild, you'll get four... Um, let's say attack in this case for the power brace. You'll get four attack, and that's basically like on the um, super training here. You get four attack plus whatever the Pokemon gives naturally. So if you're fighting something that gives you one attack, you get five. And then with the Pokerus, if you have that, it doubles it to ten, right? Now, that's pretty good. You're getting ten in each fight. But imagine a horde battle, okay? where you fight things that all give a certain type of effort value, you're getting 50 per fight if you just use something with, like, Surf or whatever. Yeah, that goes so fast. So, as kind of fun-ish Super Training is, I mean, it's kind of fun. It really is not the best way to EV train or to Super Train or whatever you want to call it. But it's fun. It's a nice alternative, and that's how you can get some of those evolutionary stones that you just can't buy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully I showed you enough. Hopefully it didn't drag on forever. But I will see you on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon X Adventure. See you next time, Super Trainers. Woohoo!